In this video for whole numbers, we are going to have a look at prime factors and how we can use them. A prime number is a number that has only two factors, one and itself. I'm reminding you that a factor is a number that a value can be divided by without having a remainder. That means numbers that can divide exactly into the number. Multiples are the values that are formed when the number is multiplied by any natural number. It will be very useful to you if you know the first few prime numbers by heart. In grade 8, you already saw how to decompose a number into its prime factors, and in example 1, we are going to revise that. Example 1. Decompose 252 into its prime factors. When breaking up or decomposing a value into its prime factors, we need to take into account all the prime numbers and decide which is the smallest prime number that is a factor of this value. In our example, the value can be divided by 2. 252 divided by 2 will then give us 126. Again, I ask myself the same question. What is the smallest prime number that 126 can be divided by? And again, that will be 2, leaving us with 63. Now, the smallest prime number that 63 can be divided by is 3, and that will give me 21, which can once again be divided by 3 to give me 7. And 7 is a prime number, so it can only be divided by 1 and itself, so we'll divide by 7 to end with 1. And as soon as I get a value of 1, I know that I've decomposed the value completely. So 252 can be broken up into 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. This can be written in exponential form as 2 squared times 3 squared times 7. Let's go and have a look at how we can use these prime factors in bigger calculations. Example 2. Use prime factors to determine whether 18 is a factor of 252. In example 1, we decompose 252 into prime factors and we got 2 squared times 3 squared times 7. If we now also break 18 up into prime factors, we can compare these prime factors to determine whether 18 is a factor of 252. To do this, we need to determine whether we can form 18 by making use of some of the prime factors of 252. So let's compare these two sets of prime factors. To form 18, we need a 2 that is available at 252, and we need two 3s that are also available in 252. If we now take these three numbers, we know that 2 times 3 times 3 will give us 18. And then those values that are left, which is 2 times 7, will form our second factor, and that will be 14. Therefore, 252 is the same as 18 times 14 without a remainder, and that means that 18 is a factor of 252. Similarly, the question could have been asked in the opposite direction, and we could have said that 252 is a multiple of 18. Let's see whether 16 is a factor of 252. 16 is written as 2 to the power of 4 in terms of prime numbers, and that can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. If we now want to form 16 by using the prime factors of 252, you will see that we only have two 2s 
available in those prime factors. The other two twos are not available. That means that 16 is not a factor of 252 because we cannot form the value 16 by making use of only the prime factors of 252. Example 3. Determine the highest common factor of 135 and 225. The highest common factor in short can be written as the HCF. In example 2 we saw that we can determine factors of a specific number by making use of its prime factors in different combinations. So here we are once again going to start off by decomposing 135 as well as 225 into their prime factors. Next we need to determine what is the biggest factor that we can form in both of these numbers. This means we can only use prime factors that are in both these numbers. Firstly, we can see that both values have one 3 as well as a second 3. The third 3 is only part of 135 and that means it is not common. Then both of them have one 5 but the second 5 is only part of 225 and therefore not common. Lastly, we are going to put these values together to form our common factor. So our highest common factor will be 3 times 3 times 5. And this, of course, is 9 times 5, which is 45. This means that the biggest number that both 135 and 225 can be divided by is 45. Example 4. Determine the lowest common multiple of 8 and 14. In this question, it is all about a multiple. But once again, we can make use of the prime factors of 8 and 14. A multiple of a number consists of the number, which of course can also be written as its prime factors, multiplied by any natural number. Therefore, a multiple of a specific number has to contain all the prime factors of the original number. So, if we want to determine a common multiple, this lowest common multiple has to contain all the prime factors of 8 and then also the prime factors of 14. You will see that the 2 is already part of the lowest common multiple that we are writing down. And that means we simply need to also multiply by the 7 to include all prime factors of 14. So here we have 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. That is then multiplied by 7, and that will give us 56. Let's have a look at another example of determining the lowest common multiple. Here we are asked to determine the lowest common multiple of 12, and 40. Again, we start by breaking up 12 and 40 into their prime factors. And because we are determining the lowest common multiple, we need to use all the prime factors of 12 to ensure that it will be a multiple of 12. And then all the prime factors of 40 also need to be included. We have already included two twos, but the third two and the five are still needed. So we need to multiply by an extra two and a five to make sure that all the prime factors of 40 are included in our multiple. When you now multiply all of these values, you will see that the lowest common multiple of 12 and 40 is 120.